morning. It's the 25th of October today, and uh, I'm on my way back to the caravan. It's uh, weather-wise, absolutely stunning day today. We've got beautiful blue skies and sunshine, which is not what was forecast. Um, so today the plan is to get to the caravan and to remove the plywood from the outer uh, face of the of the caravan and then have a look at the battens underneath because tomorrow I'll have to order some timbers in order to start doing the repairs so that's the plan for today and we'll, we'll see how we get on um, I'm not sure how long it will take but we'll, we'll see what happens alright cool So today, the plan of action is to strip back all of the plywood there to reveal the battens underneath and to work out exactly how far around each corner I'm going to have to go to get back to clean dry wood. So that's today's challenge. It is Sunday today, which means that I can't do much more than that because I need to get more timbers, um, which I'll have to order because of lockdown, you have to pre-order and everything else, I believe. So if I can get that little bit done, um, we'll be doing okay. So uh, let's get started then. Not only have they nailed this on, They've also siliconed it on as well, so I was hoping to try and get this off in, in larger bits to try and then use it to make a template. However, I don't think that's going to be possible. So uh, let's just keep going, I guess. the first bit of insulation I've come across on this side there was nothing so that's interesting see they put one piece of insulation in from new there we are oh this is a good sign put that bat on it doesn't really look to be affected this one here that seems quite dry that's, that's quite promising just stopped for a very quick cup of tea break or coffee as it is actually and I thought I'd go through my thoughts with you as they stand now but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the GoPro back on my chest because uh, it's easier and I can point things out and we'll have a little talk about what I think's been going on all right so this section here as you can see is very very wet and rotten um, which was a bit worrying actually, because I wonder if it's coming in from above. Um, same over here as well. However, pull that back and I can feel underneath there. Uh, you probably can't see that, I'll give you a shot later. Um, that feels dry. So, uh, I don't know, that's kind of, kind of promising if that's dry. Obviously you can see that's absolutely soaking. 
but then it's tracked up from here. So what was was here, if it's, if it's leaking through the window, it's obviously tracked up and through, but that's where the wind, window rail was. Actually, if you feel on the outside, the window rail's here, so if it's obviously come through, I don't know. So I'll have to do a bit more investigation. I'd like to try and pull this back just a little bit more to have a really good look under, but it's going to be a bit of a job to get it out. So, um, yeah, we'll see. And this side's not as bad, but you can still see it's quite wet. But um, we shall continue the investigations, folks, I think. All we can do. But first thoughts, not too bad. Obviously, I have to do all the timbers. Well, that's easy enough. Oh, this wall down here, that's really soft. I hadn't noticed that previously. Um, but there we go. So I'll have to take this wall out to probably about the edge of the window, I would say, because it's quite soft up there as well. So, yeah, a bit more work. Let's keep going. Ah, that's how it comes apart. <laughs> oh, well. You learn something new every day, don't you? Okay, so we've got good and bad, I guess. So some of these timbers here are wet of the window, but at least it kind of proves that it's not coming in any higher than what I can see. There's the outer skin, obviously. So that's um, quite promising. That's a curved one that's made out of ply, which has all gone rotten there. So I'll tempted just to sort of say that I will just repair that which is extending it down somehow I'm not sure yet we'll see or if I can remove it from here carefully cut a new one but overall that's not too bad folks that's not too bad at all yeah try and get behind this cupboard somehow as well which might be a bit tricky but we'll see what we can do we're getting there folks we're getting there well, there's no avoiding it. This wall is going to be stripped as well. I can feel with my fingers how soft it is just there. So, um, but luckily over here it gets quite firm. So I'm thinking maybe just this side needs rebuilding, but it goes down quite soft down to about here. So I'm going to have to try and remove all the slats and some other bits and pieces to get out of the way. Um, might have to remove this bulkhead as well so I can get behind it. We'll see. Think if I don't have to remove it, I won't bother. Um, so yeah, so this section coming out next. So the battery box is in the way here of that screw. So I have to get a little bit creative, I think. so annoying to get out <laughs> catching on everything oh right 
Every once in a while you come across a tool that's a complete game changer and for me at the moment it's this. What it is is it um, goes on the end of a socket and it can take a screwdriver bit and it really helps to get into those tight sort of corners where the screws are at an angle and you can't get it with them with a traditional um, screwdriver set. Just total game changer. Nice and, you know, it keeps it nice and snug. You're not trying to force it into a socket that's not really quite the right size, so yeah, game changer. And I just put a black, wrap of black tape around mine so it's easy to find amongst my other sockets and bits and pieces. So there we are. You can see on the end here we've got rivet heads, I don't know if you can see that clearly at all or not. Normally you drill those out but because the wall is so damp, I'm not going to have much need to, to worry about getting them out, but otherwise normally you drill the heads off them or grind the heads off them and then you can pull out whatever you need. Okay, so before I can do the wall I'm going to take the window out next and then I can remove the seals. Nice neat cut and I can see where I'm going to from there. So let's get the window out. One of our followers, David Bell, messaged me this morning saying about when I was taking the front windows off, if you lift them as high up as they can go, they'll just unhook and he said it's a lot easier. So here we go, David, let's give it a shot on this one. <laughs> and he's right. Well done, David. Thank you very much. That is a lot easier. Isn't the YouTube community a wonderful place? Thank you. I'm just going to share this with you guys. When we took out the front windows, there were pins in the front windows uh, in the rubber seals, which suggested to me they'd been out before. Whereas in this window sill here, there's no pins in there whatsoever. So I think this window's never been out, whereas that has been out definitely in the past, I would say. I also suspected that the front end of this caravan had a prang and possibly been repaired at some point, because um, the, the panel alignment isn't quite right on it. So, um, no, just more evidence, just just an interesting little tidbit for you anyway. Right, let's get this uh, window seal off and then we can start removing the wall over there. So a little close up on this window for you. That's the left hand side near the front of the caravan. You can see we've got damp on there. And then as you come around here, look on this side, we'll get the light nicely. It's completely dry. So that's promising. So as I suspect with the damp meter, it's just this kind of corner here that needs to come out next. So let's do that now. Yes, that was definitely needing doing, wasn't it? Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's not getting away. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting away with not doing that one, are we, folks? There we go. I hadn't quite expected all this up here to be quite so rotten. So it makes me think, well, maybe the water ingress isn't coming from this area, or maybe it's coming from more than one area. Maybe it's coming from the side window rail, maybe as well. But we will clear it all off and um, strip it back and. And see, I mean, you can see how bad the water's been leaking because that's the, the timber there that goes up at the diagonal, and there's just nothing left of it further down. I don't know if you can see that there. There's nothing left of the timber, really, so it's been leaking a while. And I thought that side of the caravan was bad, I thought this side was okay. Just goes to show. But um, I mean, maybe that side is as bad, and we just haven't found it yet. But uh, maybe we'll leave that for another season. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll keep going then. Just stuff falling over, don't worry. It's going to take a while. This is going to take a while. So a quick status update for you. I've scraped all of the, the polystyrene 
off. That's actually the aluminium skin on the outside that you can see. This here is the batten. Now, of course, I've just worked out all these screws coming into it. That's the awning rail, folks. So um, that's absolutely shot. And what's even more worrying is that's not even the awning side. That's the, um, the off side of the caravan. I had hoped to get away with not taking all of this out, but as you can see, the rocks right the way up here, and there's obviously a, um, a batten running across underneath here, which the cupboard screws into. So it looks like I'm gonna have to take the cupboard down hopefully only to there um, so I can get at that other button. So that's the next job. Sorry, it's a bit dark in here, folks, but I'm gonna have to disconnect the electrics to the mains lighting as well as the 12 volt lighting. So I've just turned off all 12 volt power and all 240 volt power, and then disconnect that lighting, and then we'll try and get the cupboard down. So let's see how this goes. always worth writing down what these things are because you'll never remember when you come back to reassemble and you'll think, where did that go? <laughs> Another good tip, always have a, a good memory or take some lots of photographs when you're taking something apart. It'll help you put it back together later. Put the screws back in and then you're not going to lose them especially for little tiny ones or ones that are a strange size so they are screws back in right Right, let's get this covered down then. Got a few ideas how it's gonna come down. Hopefully not in one big quick rush. So we'll see. Oh my word, that was a heck of a job. Because it's been screwed from the outside. <laughs> oh my word. And that was the same over on this side. Screws have come down into it from the outside. So, oh God almighty, what a faff. So I had this connection there. Oh, sorry, a fixing there, sorry, from the outside, a fixing there from the outside. And then there was one there, but that didn't give me much 
grief, really. Oh, gosh, it's time for a cup of tea. I'm going to isolate those electricals so I can put the power back on. And then, um, yeah, cup of tea time, I think. Oh, right. So that's the cupboard down. Of these wires, I've just connected together using a connector block for the time being, so I can have the big light on up there and the little 12 volts one I've just taped off with insulation tape. So plan after a cup of tea and a, a bite to eat is to come up here, probably about there, and um, investigate what lies behind there for me. So, I'm starting to run out of energy a bit. Not sure what the time is, but um, 20 to two. So I've been out in a few hours, but uh, let's even have, a, have a pie. Because you know what I'm having, don't you? Oh, free bed top pie for lunch. So I'll have a pie for lunch, a cup of tea, and then we'll do a little bit more and then we'll see what the time is. So yeah, cool. Right, lunch break's over, let's get cracking. I'm trying to get to about here today and I'm gonna have a good tidy up because the caravan is in absolute state and I think I'll call it a day for that one. Some good progress made today go, I'm quite pleased. All right, let's get going. So I think I'm done for the day, I've had enough so I'm gonna be heading off shortly, have a bit of a tidy up. Um, although obviously it still looks a bit of a mess, but um, there we are. So uh, what have I learned today? Well, <clears throat> I've learned that this side wall also is going to need a lot of attention. And you can see that that's actually the awning rail. I'm not sure if I said that earlier on, because you can see the uh, the awning screws coming through from the awning rail there. Um, obviously that's just mush. That's all going to need replacing. Um, it looks like the damp stopped up here somewhere, um, which is kind of good in the top corner. I'm going to have to use some sort of oscillating saw because I don't really want to have to take all these battens down because it looks like the wall materials have obviously put on first and then I think they fold the walls up in the factory and join it all together. So anyway, I'm going to try and get like an oscillating saw to trim these bits off and then cut that nice and straight. Um, this is a piece of aluminium. I'm not sure why they put these bands of aluminium along here. But there's also one in the corner, like a square of it, which was a bit unusual. Anyway, so looking at all of this here that looks to me like it was all the original timber work um because it's quite neat and uniform and then when you come across to here see if you can spot the difference between this awning rail which ends there and this awning rail which although is rotten goes all the way down through there so my suspicions about this having been in a front-ended prang at some point are possibly correct also up here i'm not sure if you can see in there but that on that left hand corner, that, that's rotten wood in there as well, but it's dry rot or dry rotted wood. Um, so I would imagine this is this looks like to me like it's been a part before in the past. And you can see the cut there that they've done to put this new awning rail piece in. Um, so yeah, I mean, when it was a part, I don't know, but um, it was obviously a, a bit of a, a, a bit of a repair, <laughs> repair job done there. So suspicions are for water ingress i think it was a combination of the front trim because you've got the where the um where the metal roof joins the fiberglass i think the the trim piece that joins them two together failed at some point and i also think there's probably water coming in from the awning rail so two places is what i'm surmising at the moment but um tomorrow first job of the day is to get the battery box out so i can cut the wall down flush and, and, and finish removing the bad stuff from there. I may have to end up taking this bulkhead out. Um, I was trying to avoid doing that, but it looks inevitable at the moment. But we'll see how it looks once the battery box is removed, um, which is a bit of a nuisance because uh, unless I can wire it up temporarily, I'll have no power to the sockets in here, which is kind of useful for charging the drill and, and other bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, that's about it. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, the <laughs> we've got a budget of about two weeks to try and get all this done and turned around, in, so which, which is quite ambitious, I know. Um, but we'll we'll see if we can do it. So uh, stick with us and uh, either watch us succeed or fail. So there we go. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.